hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, where today I'm actually quite excited to cover this puzzle. Uh, this is a puzzle that I found hidden in the depths of Nickley.com, the website that unfortunately, tragedy, but it's closing down. Um, and I actually believe that this puzzle might be the best uh, tutorial Sudoku I've ever seen. Uh, there is something in this puzzle's logic for even the most advanced solvers. Um, and it is a beautiful solve. So what I want to do is a slightly different video so we can try and learn from it as much as we can. Um, so we'll do the simple numbers first of all and then we'll go from there and I'll, I'll hint at where I think you need to think about the next piece of logic and we'll try and solve it together that way. So without further ado, let's look at it. You can see we have a three here, a three here, so this square here that's going to have to be a three. Uh, well, we can see we have a 6 here and a 6 here, so let's put a 6 into this block. It gives us a 6 here as well, this 6 and this 6. Um, okay, these, this 5 here, you can see that will allow us to pencil mark two 5s in this block. 5 is going to be forced into one of these two positions, and that allows us to place a 5 there as well. Um, uh, just scanning the column, column one here, we've got to place five, seven, and eight. You can see we have a five here and a five here, so this square here will be a five. And then have a quick look at this middle three by three block, see if you can see something interesting about, about it. Um, so I'll tell you now, we need to notice this three, four pair and this three, four pair. Now that's going to force a 3-4 pair into these two positions, um, which immediately actually allows us to place a 5 here again, look, because, because now we have a 5 here, a 5 here, the 5 can't go in this position. So this will have to be a 5. Uh, that allows us to place a 5 there, and a 5 here, and that results in 5 there. So we've, we've done all the 5s, and you may be thinking, well, this looks like a very straightforward puzzle, Simon. Um, well, let's see. One thing we have to remember about Nickley puzzles is that they're all hand designed. So, I mean, this, this puzzle has an author. You know, the, the author is not a computer program. So, and what you tend to find with these puzzles, therefore, is that they do have a beautiful internal logic. It will have been designed very carefully to ensure that there's a, a linear solution path that you, you're intended to find if you study it for long enough. This is an extra hard puzzle too, so although we've got all the fives, there is going to be a sting in the tail. Now one thing we can notice here is this seven and this seven. And you can see that rules out sevens down the column here, rules out a seven from this square, so that allows us to pencil mark sevens into these two squares. And this, I think, allows us to spot a very common thing that you find with this sort of notation in, in Sudoku solving. Uh, but it's a nice example of it. So we, you need to think now about where we can place a 7 in the first three columns. Um, and you know, using the information to be gleaned from the 7s that we already have placed in the grid. And the critical thing to note is that the 7 in this 3x3 three three block is locked into one of these two positions. And there is a symmetry with where the 7 is going to end up in this 3x3 three three block here. In particular, it's not possible for a 7 to be in row in column 1 in this 3x3 three three block. It is going to be in one of these square, squares which are in column 2 or 3. And so it's the 7 in this 3x3 three three block. Now, you can play around with the 7s as much as you like, but you won't be able um, to place a 7, therefore, in any of these three positions here. Um, because if this is a 7, for example, the 7 in this 3x3 three three block will be locked into one of these two positions. And that will rule out 7s from all these three positions. If this is a 7, that will force a 7 here, that will do exactly the same thing. So there's actually only one place left that a 7 can go in this 3x3 three three block. And that's there. That allows us to place an 8 as well. Okay. Um, and now I think the first bit of more difficult logic. Um, so we now need to hunt 
we need to hunt for two X-Wings hidden in this grid. And pause if you don't want me to tell you the numbers we want to look at. Um, the numbers we want to look at are fours and sixes. So take a stare at the grid and see if you can work out where these X-Wings might need to, or wh where they're going to exist. Now remember, with an X-Wing, what we're trying to do is to isolate um, two positions in a row or a column where a number can appear. So let's, for example, let's just take a look uh, down column nine of the grid. Ask ourselves where we can place a four. Well, you can see you can't place a four in either of these two positions because of this four. This four over here rules out a four in this position. This position can take a four, so let's pencil mark a four there, and so can this position, four here. Now, if we move across now to column six and ask the same question, this four rules out a four into any of these positions. This same four over here that we looked at before rules out a four there. This can take a four, and so can this. So we have this box arrangement of fours now. I'll try and add some highlighting. And what that means is that we were looking at the columns there, we were trying to identify where in these two columns fours could go. But by finding this pattern of fours, we rule out there being any other fours in the rows that these fours are occurring in. So there are no, uh, no more fours in either row six or row nine. Now, one thing when you find an X-Wing, especially in a handcrafted puzzle, is probably not going to be by accident. So we need to we need to stare at the grid here and ask ourselves, well, which, which cells are affected by this logic that we've found? And there aren't many, actually, because a 4 here has already been ruled out by this 4. So, you know, the fact that there is an X-Wing doesn't really help us for this square. It helps us for this square. We couldn't have ruled out a 4 from this square without the X-Wing. Can't help us for either of these two squares because this 4 is already eliminating fours and it can't help us for this square because this square is already eliminating a four here so it's only this square as well so there are only two squares really that this x-wing of fours is helping with and that might allow you to sort of try and hone in I think I said I've already told you that it's sixes we need to think about as the other x-wing that's hidden in this grid but what we're trying to probably do when we find this first piece of logic is to find a, s a second piece of logic that's going to interact uh, directly on one of these two squares. Now, let's take a look at sixes in column nine. Here we have a six. Here we don't have a six. So the six could go here. This six is ruling out sixes from these two positions. This position here can take a six. Let's look now at yeah, column five looks hopeful actually. You can see again this six is preventing a six from this position, so we have a six here, no six in either of these two positions, no six here, and a six here. So now we've got another X-wing now on sixes. And you can see this six this arrangement, this X-wing on sixes is not having no effect on this square, but it is having an effect on this one. So I would suggest that this is the next square. We need to try and pinpoint whether this square has a weakness. So what numbers can go into this square? Uh, well, on the face of it, one can go in, two and three can't, four can't go in because of the X-wing, five can't go in, six can't go in because of the six X-wing, seven can't go in, eight can't go in and nine can go in so it looks like it can take a one or a nine but look at this one here this one here allows us to place pencil mark ones into these two positions and that means this square only has one more possibility this square here has got to be a nine that's going to allow us to pencil mark nines there look pencil mark twos into those two positions and now it's a really, I think this is, 
I don't see this piece of logic very often. It's very obvious once you think about it, but it, for some reason my brain just doesn't work this way very efficiently. So let's have a look now at this 3x3 three three block and ask ourselves about whether or not there's anything important about the numbers that are that can go in here and the arrangement of those numbers, especially considering this 7-9 pair that we have down here. So it's obvious that 7, 8 and 9 can go here and this 8 is forcing an 8 into one of these two positions. But it should be clear to everybody that the 8 can't go here. If the 8, if the eight is here, these two squares here, both of these two squares, will have to contain the numbers 7 and 9. And if that's the case, this square could not be filled because we know there's a 7 or a 9 here. Well, if these two squares are 7 and 9, there's nothing left to place here. So in fact, this square here has to be a 7 or a 9 because if it isn't and it takes the 8, we run into the problem. Now, that means this, this is an 8 here and this is a 7 or a 9 there like that. Uh, now, what can we do now? We've got sevens in these two positions. So there's a seven in one of these two positions here. And we get this, this symmetrical arrangement of sevens now as well in column in rows two and three now. So we know the seven here is locked into a, uh, either row two or row three in this three by three block. Same thing here, it's locked into row two or row three. So there's going to be no sevens in these four positions here. Sevens are forced up into row one, and we have a seven here. So that allows us to pencil mark sevens into those two positions. Um, okay, now. Now look at column nine and ask yourself some questions about column nine. There is a really interesting this is more of a New York Times type trick that we're going to see here. So you can see we've got 8, 5, 1 and 7 in the column already. But in row 5 and row 1 we have the numbers 6, 3 and 4. None of which are appearing in column 9 yet. We've got 8, 5, 1 and 7. So we've got three unknowns here being ruled out from this square and this square, two open positions in column 9. Well, if that's the case, the numbers 6, 3 and 4 must fill the other positions in column 9 in order for it to work. So we know, in fact, that this is 3, 6 and this. So we know 3, 4 and 6 are going to be down here like this. Now, we've already got a 3 here, so we can eliminate that 3, and we've already got a 4 here, so we can eliminate that 4 and we can eliminate this 6. Um, so we've got 3, 4 and 6. So the numbers we're left with placing therefore are 2 and 9 into the open positions. So I'll turn the pencil mark that in if it lets me. Yeah, 2, 9, 2, 9. 2, 9, 2, 9. 2, 9, 2, 9. 2, 9, 2, 9. Okay, so now how can we use Ah, I see. Yes, okay. So now let's have a look. We've eliminated this square now down to a 3 or a 4. And that matches very nicely with this square here. So now... 3s, yes, yes, I see. Okay, so now let's take a look. We're looking for another X-swing here. This time on 3s. Um, and we need to somehow use the fact we've just found this 3-4 pair. So that gives you a hint that we must be looking at uh, one of these, well, in fact, this position in particular. is uh, The fact that we've managed to eliminate a 3 from this position must be important. So let's have a look at column 8 and ask ourselves where a 3 can go now. So can't go in this position because of this 3. Can go here. Can go here. Can't go here now. Can't go here can't go here. So there are two positions for a 3 in column 8. Now let's look at column 4. No. Yes. No. 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 
So here, another X-Wing hidden in the puzzle. All because of this 3-4 pair. And now, that must be useful, surely. Let's. So where now, let's have a look at row 3. We need to place 2, 3, 6, 7, 9. Well, 3's are ruled out from here now. 2, 3, 6... Seven is ruled out because we in fact we managed to get this seven here. This has to be a nine. There we are. So an, another beautifully intricate number that we've had to sort of farm from this grid. So that now, oops, oh no 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 no, I didn't mean to do that. Sorry. I want to put a seven in there like that. Um, and now I think we're probably closing in on the final stages. Um, but I think you'll agree with me, I hope you'll agree with me, this has been a very, very tough challenge. This one here and this one here, I mean this has to be a one, oops, up there. Let's put some more ones in down there. Nine's now a forced up to that position, that gives us this two. That means this is a two here, two in one of those two positions, two here, two, one, that way around, that must be a one, this has got to be an eight. Okay, and I, I think um, I can leave the rest of it for, as an exercise for the, for the viewer. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this puzzle, I thought, I thought it was sensational, to be honest. Uh, we normally look at the diabolical uh, from the Daily Telegraph um, on Fridays. Uh, over the weekend um, and I, I did have a look at it this week and it, it really uh, it had none of the the beauty of this puzzle so I think this is definitely a better a better puzzle uh, for teaching us all more about how to solve Sudoku better um, so please leave comments please subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content we really appreciate that and we'll see you again soon on Cracking the Cryptic <laughs>